Hey everyone, it's Jasmine Ray, and we are back with another video. This is Ceramic Journey number three, and I just wanted to show you guys the process that I take to make a tumbler, just one single tumbler. Um, in this video, I'm not going to be showing how I do the, I'll call them embeds. As you can see in the back, I do have two mugs that I have embedded um, mermaid tails and crosses on another one and things like that. This one, I'm just going to be showing you how I just do the first part before we get to the decorations of the mug. So before we get started, I do want you to subscribe to my channel so you can follow me along my ceramic journey. Um, I am not a professional. This is a disclaimer. I'm not a professional um, ceramic artist or anything like that. I literally just started. Only took one pottery class. And yeah, that's it. So as you can see right here, I'm just doing my measurements because I am going to cut out a slab. It's going to be a rectangle, which is going to be the um, cylinder part of the tumbler. This is my mold that I'm going to be using. Um, I wrap newspaper around it so that the newspaper can soak up some of the water that's already in the clay. Um, I didn't. I don't use any water as I'm rolling the clay out or anything like that because I want it to dry faster. So I try to use less water as much as possible unless I am binding the clay together, which is as you can see right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm using my ceramic slip that I made. I do have a video, which is my first video in the ceramic journey on how I make my clay slip. As a beginner, like I said, I'm very big, um, new to this. So I've watched a few videos and I just went on ahead and took a shot at it and it came out pretty good. So I'm just mending the two end pieces together, making it um, flush as possible making sure that line of demarcation is out of there um, and just making sure there's enough clay in that area just so that I don't have any cracking going on. Um, I don't want my clay to explode in the kiln whenever I um, take the time out to go and fire it or anything like that. All of the products that I'm going to be using will be listed in the description box below. A lot of the tools that I use I did um, purchase from Amazon. Um, the tool that I'm using right here are cookie cutters. I bought this set. It's a set of 12. And these are the cookie cutters that I use to make the bottom pieces of my tumblers. So as you can see, I do have a lot of demarcation on the inside of the tumbler, but we'll go ahead and fix that in a little bit. So I'm scoring the bottom piece and you're going to see me score the base of the tumbler as well. This is going to make a rough area, which is going to help bind both of these pieces together and stick really well of course I have to do I do have to add a little bit of slip just to make sure that it binds well and for those of you who don't know slip is a binding agent um, all you do is mix water and clay together just a little bit to where it's like a thick consistency which is what I like and boom that's it so I am mending the two end pieces together from the inside since I've done it already on the outside. Now I will say with this technique, I love it. Only I have to be consistent with my shape. Um, but then necessary, I, I, I really don't actually because it is a handmade product. So it's not always guaranteed that it's going to all come out looking the same, which is why I like it. This process because I mean, it's unique in its own way, right? So um, I am taking away the extra clay from the bottom and this is what I am left with. Um, and then the next part you're going to see me do is of course bind these two things together. So this wooden tool is what I like to use to bind the two pieces, separate pieces together. 
And then, of course, I go over it with slip as well. And that's another thing that I do have to work on. So the first thing I did, I have to work on, which I did, didn't mention, is um, the cylinder part where the two pieces come together to create the body of the tumbler. I do need to work on that since I'm hand building. I think I need to work more on that area before moving forward. Um, because I've noticed that once it dries, it kind of bulges out just a little bit. Not too bad though, but these are trial and error pieces. I am just, you know, getting used to the clay, used to hand building. I am going to go somewhere and fire them. So I'll see how these pieces come out and see if my technique is good. So I'm using my metal rib to clean up the bottom. You just see me use some slip with my Morphe's brush to um, mend the pieces on the inside at the bottom. Make sure there are no cracks or anything like that. So I'm using this metal rib to clean up the bottom. Um make sure the side walls are even now i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you i don't really care about how the very bottom look um i find that as long as it stands up straight and it's not wobbly it's fine <laughs> so it may not be perfectly round looking on the bottom but like i said it makes it even more unique so I don't complain too much about it so when you're hand building you're pretty much doing a lot of blending um, if you want to decide to hand build pottery or ceramic and sell it which is what I'm planning to do then I do recommend you know practicing smoothing and at least, you know, letting it be as flat at the bottom as much as possible of the tumbler and things like that. Now, this is the, I, I call it the ugly stage of ceramics because it's, it's messy looking. It's not as pretty as, what, you know, what we think about when we think about ceramics. But this is the most critical part because once you fire it, which is called bisque fire. That's it. <laughs> that is it. So you do want to pay special attention to this part. Um, the building. You want to pay special attention to that. So what I've noticed that I need to work on more as well. Is the rim of the tumblers. Um, they're fine. I like them. I like how thick it is. Um, I just need to remember to round it out and not let it be as sharp around the edges you see what i'm doing right here but do it on the inside as well like make sure it's really rounded on the inside and not just straight if that makes any sense see i did just a little bit right here but i should have done more because it's, it's still pretty straight on the inside Another thing that I need to invest in is um, what you call a banding wheel so that I can spin it and, you know, fix things, you know, as much as I need to without having me turn in the newspaper. <laughs> but hey, I wanted to make sure this is what I this is what I can see myself doing for a long period of time before I fully invest myself into this craft. And I can honestly say that I am definitely invested. So that is the body of the tumbler. I let it sit for mm, a few minutes because that's all it takes. Because I don't use a lot of water. Because um, it's not on the wheel. Because when you, know, when you put your ceramic clay on the wheel, you're using a lot of water. So it's not as um, wet. And I like for it to be this way because, I, well, I like for it to be stiffer because I can easily hand build. It'll stand up. I don't have to worry about it flopping over or anything like that. 
So right now I am just taking my damp sponge and I'm just smoothing out the sides or the wall of the tumbler. I don't want to have any like super rough edges. I want it to be nice and smooth. And it looks pretty good so far. This is the fourth tumbler that I made and this one is a little bit shorter. It's kind of almost like a kid's little tumbler. And it's going to shrink even more once it's fired in the kiln. So I'm just showing you guys how I stamped the mug or the tumbler. So instead of using this cookie cutter all the way through, I'm just using it to create the outline of the cross. So I'm pushing it enough to create like a stencil almost. And it's a little design. Like I really thought of it last minute. I didn't know what type of design I wanted to put on this tumbler. I just went out on a limb and just went on it and did it. And I actually like it. It's simple and it's really nice. Now, whenever I fire it and it's time to glaze it, what I plan on doing with this particular tumbler, it's using black gloss glaze in the outline of the cross, if that makes any sense. And that's it. I'm going to just leave it like that. I'm not going to do anything extra with it or anything like that. Um, it's going to be really, really nice. And I can't wait until it's time to glaze all the pieces that I've made so far. I've made eight pieces so far. And I cannot wait to glaze it. But before firing it for the first time, you have to at wait to do so until all of the pieces are super hard no trace of water or anything like that I will actually be bringing my pieces to this local potter pottery um, business that's going to fire it for me but this is the end right here I hope you guys like this video if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit that like button Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.